the wind was waking people up about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. Hurricane force winds hit early in the morning. Uh, the hospital actually didn't see the floodwaters until right around 10 o'clock. This is outside of my office window at 10.15 a.m. And the front entrance and the water has come in the front entrance and soaked through into the hallway. We've moved the ICU up to the second floor and we're waiting for the eye wall to pass now so the wind will shift. As the eye approached, the eye of the storm, uh, we were on the northeast corner of the eye wall, which is the strong side of the storm. And as it came in, it brought the storm surge with it. Um, no one had predicted the kind of storm surge we had. The weather uh, models were telling us uh, 12 to 15, maybe 18 feet. We're at 23 feet eleva elevation here. Uh, we're a mile and a half inland uh, from, from almost any bo big body of water. And we've never had any experience like this before. We've never been flooded like this. About 9.25, people came and said, Mr. Howell, there's water over there at the edge of the parking lot, and we're not sure, uh, we haven't seen that before. Maybe we should move the patients upstairs. We had moved everybody from the second floor, any patients who were there, down to the first floor because that would be the least likely floor to get damaged by the wind. Um, so now we started moving everyone back up. This was the lobby downstairs on the first floor. This is where uh, you can see the differential on the glass outside. This is one of the windows where people were seeing fish swimming by. We, we lost, basically lost every service except one 25 bed unit upstairs. We're a 104 bed hospital and 79 beds plus all of the ancillary services, surgery, cardiopulmonary, laboratory, radiology, uh, emergency room, everybody is on the first floor. We've got about nine million dollars of equipment that we've uh, collected on our list of equipment that's been red tagged. We did carry flood insurance, but of course the National Flood Insurance Program for a business is a half a million dollars. Um, and so we had it, you know, and we're glad we did because it's certainly the half a million dollars there will help. One of the things you notice here, you, there's no point in complaining because everybody's pretty much in the same boat. Almost anybody who lives down here lost pretty much everything they had, or, or uh, even, if, even if you were insured, you still lost it and have to replace it if you can with the insurance money. Uh, almost three quarters of our employees lost either their entire home or use of their home. Uh, the uh, medical staff is actually in a similar situation. Six of our seven board members lost their homes also. So you're really dealing with the entire, the, you know, the entire community and its leadership, all homeless and, and, and wrestling with, with all, you know, huge personal problems at the same time. It's difficult for the other medical entities to recover from something like this. And uh, some of the hardest hit, of course, are the physicians. The medical staff has just been devastated. The free clinics that come into town help a lot, smooth some of that over. We've got lots and lots of people who helped kind of pull things back together and make sure the population didn't sink into some sort of, of horrible disease-ridden state. My name is Brad Stone. I'm an emergency medical technician from Chicago, Illinois, and a pre-med student. And uh, for the past three months, I've been the administrator of the New Wayland uh, Clinic. Uh, I arrived here about six days after the storm, set up a little first aid boo-boo station, and it has since evolved into a fully functional clinic with doctors and nurses and medical students and nurse practitioners and physician assistants and a pharmacy which right now holds about $50,000 worth of donated medicines. For the first four weeks I was here, it was on this parking lot, it was about 110 to 120 degrees every day. Uh, the humidity was absolutely horrible. Um, we occasionally had people being carried fireman style into the clinic, carried in on doors, um, you know, have a person on, on either side of them, you know, passed out, heat exhaustion, things like this. Uh, we had a lot of people stepping on nails, people who had been battered terribly. People who had lost all their medicines from in the storm, their diabetes medicines, the high blood pressure medicines, they needed them. Okay. Since Katrina happened, uh, I hadn't been on oh, medication. So. Yeah, yeah. But see, so I was going to go see my regular doctor, but his office is flooded out. Oh, I went straight to work. I need to get, I know, I need to get back you to know what you're Amongst the clinics, we'll call each other several times a day um, and say, 
you know, we have an extra doctor, but we need a nurse. You know, can we do a swap? And we end up swapping each other out. And uh, we're all clinics that are off the grid. We're not part of a large organization. We're all individuals coming together to help out. Um, and so it's been a really organic, spontaneous experience. The physician offices in this area were all destroyed, literally. Um, some of the offices are reopening, but for a long period of time there were no primary care or specialty care physicians, so we were providing the medical relief. We set this medical clinic up about two weeks after the hurricane, and we've been here uh, since. And we've seen, since that time, in this facility, about 8,000 people. What we said we would do is stay as long as the community wants us to stay. And the mayor of the town of Bay St. Louis has indicated that he believes that's through the end of the year. Dr. Curran and I were talking a few minutes ago about how it seems like the patients are more desperate now than they were early on. Because early on it was, you know, just after the hurricane and everybody was kind of in the same position. There wasn't any, you know, electricity, no water. And people didn't realize, I don't think, how long it was going to take for the community to recover. And it's starting to sink in now that their FEMA trailers are starting to arrive and now they're in a trailer. And they're in a trailer with 500 other people in trailers around them when they were in their own homes before. They lost their jobs and they don't know when they're going to have their jobs back because, you know, the employer's uh, locations were all destroyed. So they don't have insurance and they had insurance before. And so they're becoming more desperate as a result, just a kind of emotionally desperate for, for help. There are a couple local physicians, um, Dr. Sidney Chevis being one of them, who has come in and staffed the clinic when we've had a hard time finding a physician to come down. There's been a couple of times where that's occurred and he'll come in and work in the clinic. I've worked a few times down at the clinic at the depot. There's a very good group there. Uh, they've been very good to my patients. Uh, and every time I've been by, uh, pass on the word of the patients of mine they've seen asking about me. So uh, I've tried to pass the word back that I'm still here. If they need anything, let me know. When I first came, I was doing OB, so I'm now taking care of some of the grandchildren of the patients I delivered 35 years ago. Uh, going on to the fourth generation for some of my patients uh, that are here. Again, this, this is my home. This is where I was born. One of the more common sayings uh, around here where most people I know live and where this office is, it was always if, if this office got water, everybody would flood. And everyone did flood. Uh, it's just unimaginable. Uh, it, it's never been recorded. That was how high the water got back here in the back of the building. Uh, between three to four feet. Uh, we had three to four feet of water in our home, too. We had four and some five draw filing cabinets. We're still paper. The water level was up to the top draw. So Three-fourths of the charts were uh, unsalvageable. We'll start getting records back from any admissions they've had from other hospitals, uh, especially new patients that have moved in that had copies of their records transferred. It just means starting all over again, like from the beginning. I thought I've experienced almost every emotion there is to experience in, in medicine. That's one of the things that's always attracted me. There's highs, there's lows. Uh, this has been indescribable. For the patients, the people, the town, <clears throat> unless you can stay focused on one thing at a time and hope everyone else is doing the same thing, it's coming back. It's coming back and you're seeing good things every day.